Hello everyone, we're back at Marineland, this time for a bit of a shorter visit uh, as it's the end of the summer and I wanted to recap and just give an idea of what maybe is planned for the future based on the ride operations, uh, or at least the rides that aren't currently running this season, which hopefully will be running in the coming season. Also a couple of different things as I have a different camera so I might be able to go on Skyscreamer today with the GoPro which would be kind of cool to get the view that I always talk about up there. Again, we're not going to actually go to any of the enclosures today in this vlog. That has been covered in previous vlogs anyhow so definitely check those out if you're interested. And as I say as a disclaimer for all of my interactions in this park, uh, we're not here to highlight any of the controversial issues that may be controversial to some viewers. We're really just focusing on the park as a whole and its future as a themed attraction in the Niagara Falls area. Let's begin our marine land voyage. So as mentioned, some rides unfortunately aren't working like Viking Adventure. Um, about six rides I believe, six or seven rides currently not operating. They did get a couple actually up um, as opposed to the start of the season when I first visited here. And we have an example of that right here where we have Bumblebee fully operating. I should probably give this a ride, it's somewhat of a walk on. Yeah, we're going to go on. Bumblebee for fun, just to check it out. Okay, so just got off of Bumblebee. Pretty good Troika for a kid's ride, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's not a bad cycle either, pretty long. As you can see, successfully, and it's quite a great vantage point, uh, most of the kids' rides in this section are actually up and running, so not bad. If you're bringing the kids here, you're still going to probably get a full value, I'll say. Maybe not so much so if you're looking for the thrill rides. Um, but we're going to go in here, we might go on the coaster. Uh, I've got a limited time here, so hopefully, I'll be able to get everything in. Uh, that I do want to ride today, mainly Skyscreamer. Um, but uh, we're going to get to the other side of the park. We'll go through the kids' area and then also the main rides and go over to Skyscreamer and cover everything I said I would. It's also busier today as well, which is nice to see. Um, there's just like a general good vibe uh, in the park generally, uh, which just as I've said in other vlogs, uh, you don't really get at Wonderland, which is a little bit more chaotic and hectic. All right, let's go into this area behind me. As everyone knows, if you're just coming for the rides here, well, those that have been here uh, know that you have a bit of a walk in between the attractions and uh, yeah, because I'm stuck for time today and I'm covering a lot in Niagara, uh, yeah, this is a shorter vlog like I said, but we're back to the food area which I'm going to end up at anyway. And I'm actually curious because I've never really covered much of this area, uh, every time I'm in Marineland I seem to be stuck for time because I never commit a full day here but uh, you know as should be emphasized if you are coming to Marineland 
then you, uh, yeah, you can budget for half a day here if you're really diligent about it. Uh, really, uh, with the full complement of attractions available, you would probably find yourself uh, maybe with a full day if you're doing like re-rides Dragon Mountain uh, in a normal world. And unfortunately, that's not really the case quite yet again here at Marineland this season. So, we're off to the main attractions because uh, the lines for the kids' attractions were probably about like one cycle's worth of waiting. And because of that, I'm going to hop step it to what I really want to do, which is Skyscraper, which I want to get that POV for today. So, that's it for family rides. I, I, I did like the fact that uh, when it came to the operations, you did have a situation where they kind of explain how many people could get on the ride right out of the gate and also gave you your instructions for boarding as you actually entered the ride for your cycle. So that way everyone kind of, if you're paying attention, knew what to do once you got on the ride. Just a small detail that normally isn't done at theme park attractions and because of that I, uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed sort of that little instruction. All right, already out of breath here. It's a hot day in August. It's the last day of August. So we're gonna get over to the main attractions. Okay, so polar spell. I can't even talk. Polar splash behind me. As you can see, I'm already starting to sweat. It's getting super hot, as always, out here. Uh, my, uh, my days at Marineland always are hot days. So uh, we're just going to prioritize things and get right on to Sky Screamer. Uh, get up there, get that climb out of the way, which is much lamented on previous vlogs. And uh, yeah, we'll go and check out Star Voyager and see how the progress of that ride is going. And then obviously uh, check out the other rides that I had promised as well. All right, here we go. Gonna get myself pumped up for the ascend of the 150 foot hill. That ride going off behind me, the skyscraper.
Okay, just got off of my two rides there on Skyscreamer. I wanted to make sure that at least one of those views was the one I always talk about out over uh, the falls itself. You get that fantastic view. And I have to say, still a really impressive uh, drop tower, s, &S uh, space shot. Like, it's a fantastic ride. I'd have to say probably one of the best, if not, like, one, the best thrill ride in the country. Saying a lot, but... When you tally it all up, that's a fantastic ride with the view, the station, the full package, and the fact that you get both, like a, you, you get shot into the air and you get shot from the top of the tower. It's an unbeatable experience. So if you're coming here for a thrill, it almost like for the fact that there was no weight and you want a lot of re-rides and you like a drop tower and like one of the best in the world, well, that's it right there. It's fantastic. Uh, I am so strapped for time because of those two rides now that I'm going to go through the rest of the park and kind of do like a live, well, a continuous vlog, if you will, uh, through the rest of Marineland while I scuttle on out of here. Um, I did Star, Star Voyager. That's where we're headed next. I've done Skyscreamer, which was the main reason for me to come. Uh, as said, all the other, or most of the adult attractions are... Uh, non-children's attractions. Uh, only half of them are open and this is the jewel in the crown for what is on offer here right now. This is the close of the season at Marineland so uh, they're only going to be open weekends after this week so it's really just to sum up what's going on as I said at the beginning and uh, give you an idea of how it was here at the close out of the season here in 2021. Okay, so we are now back to ground level, and uh, we're literally coming towards magic, magic experience, the same way that I came last time I was here, I'd say six, seven weeks ago. Uh, and unfortunately, despite the rumors, uh, the ride does not look like it's anywhere near to being ready for service. Um, to be perfectly honest, I'd say it looks exactly the same as it was when I was here last. So, yeah, if you roll back, say, in the last vlog that we were here, I'm pretty sure most of this equipment uh, was similarly situated, even down to these pallets that foreground the ride itself. Uh, I can understand that because at the end of the day, uh, the bride isn't going to be anywhere near uh, ready for the current season. So if it's getting some extensive, it does look like some different uh, mechanical work is going on on the ride. And I'm cool with that. If it means that we'll be back up and running for the coming year, uh, we definitely would love to see these classic Huss attractions back and running wherever they are. And this park is really, as I said in the previous vlog, a place for Huss fans. If you like Huss attractions, yeah, you definitely want to come to Marineland. Oh, we're coming towards Dragon Mountain. It just makes me feel like I just wish it was open. It would be great if it was, because uh, I'm desperately dying to get back on this coaster. Uh, most of you know, it is pretty legendary now around the world for what it is. It's so unique 
and it's one of the last great arrows that exists, including of that bow tie element, the only one truly of its kind in the world. Hopefully that baby will be running again next year and we can get lots of re-rides on it. I would die as well for a night ride on it. It doesn't look like um, the brush in the tunnel as well has been cleared out. So yeah, Dragon Mountain's probably nowhere closer to being running for quite, or at least this season. But we definitely hope that will change come 2022. That was just a little look at Star Voyager. Um, as you definitely see, the stairs are now in place at last to get uh, people on and off the ride. I'm still disappointed that uh, the ride isn't uh, a little bit more flush or built into the foundation of what was the original topple tower that existed there. Because, um, yeah, it's, it kind of looks a little bit uh, temporary with its current setup, but it looks brand spanking new and great. I will give it that, and I'm looking forward to getting onto it. Obviously going to be next year when that happens, um, but it should be a great attraction. Once again, with uh, Sky Screamer and Dragon Mountain behind me, and that up and running, uh, this, this park will have a good complement to rides, unlike it's had in previous years. So we're going to go through uh, the last section of the park here really quickly before I rush out of here um, for a really short but surprisingly good day uh, and the fact that I've been able to get everything that I want in in a very short amount of time uh, here at Marina. You gotta watch out for these guys. They're always kinda in the path when you're not here. Candu's Twister is up and running as usual. Gonna give it a pass, unfortunately, this year. As I know what it's all about, it's a good ride. You can check out some uh, action from the ride on the last vlog as well. The bird population here is out of control. As you can see right now, there is a lake full of birds.
right, we're heading through the last section as promised. Uh, not many changes here. Look at my mask sweat that I got going on. Wave swingers going on to a pretty happy public and uh, almost to capacity. I'm gonna obviously give it a pass because I've been on a couple of, I've been on swings twice already this year and I never really feel good about doing it on my own while in a park, but uh, there's your proof that it's up and running. Well up and running and really just a great situated ride. One of my personal favorite rides, unfortunately still on, uh, not available, which is the Flying Dragon. Been sitting dormant all season, much like some of the other rides. I just love the design of this ride. Just how it's grown into its location. It just is a unique flying carpet as far as being an attraction that you can't really actually uh, find that much in North America at least. It's not actually a, an incredible ride uh, by any stretch of imagination either. It's a good ride, but not high on thrills. I just like the way it's situated here. There's so much room for more attractions in this park. You can literally put another flat on every, on the opposite side of uh, every major flat that you have here. But fortunately, the best themed flat ride in Canada is up and running, which is right behind me over here. Also covered in the last vlog, the Ocean Odyssey up and running in its glory. Really is a fantastically themed ride. Honestly, I said before, this is a Tokyo Disney Sea level attraction as far as the theming is concerned. Now, oddly enough, Hurricane Cove does not seem to be operating. That may be because it uh, has been taken off of service due to staff, uh, i.e. an early closure. Not entirely sure why it's not running as it was when I was here last time. And this is a another one of those unique, rare to find attractions in North America that I hope that we don't lose because this is a fun ride. Uh, I'd say much more than Ocean Odyssey. Even it's a classic design, classic huss. There's a massive contingent of people coming in here now and it's uh, like, well I guess it's actually open till 7 today. I misrepresent uh, the hours of the park, 7 o'clock. So if you're getting here at 3.30, it actually is still enough time to cover almost everything in the day, um, including a show. So uh, I'm going to renege on my original promise because of time uh, and I'm not going to be going to the food offerings today. Uh, I think it probably would be a better idea to do that next year anyway, because I will be coming back next year, uh, hopefully for Dragon Mountain, obviously it's Star Voyager. Uh, so I'll cover that next year. I might end off in the Penguin Enclosure today, however, it's just recently open. So if not, we'll see you outside Marineland to wrap things up.
All right, guys, well, that is the Marineland end of summer vlog for 2021. A pretty pleasant visit for an hour and a half of my time. Uh, you're gonna find hard pressed, even though I only did get two rides in, but it was the ride, the peak ride that you wanna actually check out here. So, uh, some photography going on behind me that's fascinating to me. Uh, yeah, so pretty good visit. Probably one of the busiest I've seen the park to try to deal with the wind here. Probably one of the busiest I've seen, uh, or one of the busier days I've seen at this park, oddly enough, given the COVID situation. Um, but overall, I'd say, you know, it might be too late for you to really make this assessment uh, if you're watching this as it is the end of the summer. But uh, great offering for families. I would definitely encourage that if you're thinking about coming down. Uh, for adults, not exactly a great offering. Just lost my train of thought there for some reason while I'm looking for the, my car here. So yeah, as I said, uh, definitely check the website as they have been diligent with updating that to make sure that uh, their ride offerings are accurate as per what they can offer during this current season. Hopefully that will change next year and there will be a full ride offering here at Marineland. And as I said, if that is the case, they're gonna have a very competitive uh, sort of amusement offering, at least locally. Niagara Amusement Park just opened this uh, past weekend across the river, so there is more increased uh, competition coming in the coming season. So nothing but uh, a real hope that this park has a bright future ahead of it. Uh, it certainly looks like, as far as like people coming into the park, that there is a strong interest and marine lands offering in the future. So that's signing off for another season here at Marine Land. Hopefully next year, like I said, we'll be able to get a full idea or a full offering of what Marine Land offers. And I will say, I'm in the free parking lot. Yes, it's free parking here in Marine Land, which you can, as you can see behind me, just pull up your Winnebago and have yourself a camp out. For those that liked Fantasy Island and its offering for picnics, I will remind people that yes, this park still retains that policy, you can bring your own food. And even the food here is a great value, so uh, yeah, overall it is, other than the, you know, the expected ticket price, uh, once you get inside, it is a great value compared to other parks. All right, wrapping it up because we've got a lot of stuff to do in uh, Niagara Falls today. Uh, I got to go pick up my partner for some exciting videos. But thanks for watching, guys. Please, as always, share if you like what you see here. Hopefully, you do. And as always, enjoy.